Okay, now let's take a look at the effect generator tool. Let's select our fixtures on the left there by highlighting them. And then we will open the DMX board. Here, like so. And we'll also open the effect generator both in the tools tab. Now in the effect generator, first click enable and then click add polygon and we'll select 20 polygons click OK and we'll select an interval of one second and then when we push play you can see the path that the moving light will then take. If you have multiple fixtures governed by this effect you can also move that phase slider and that will create a little difference between each and then you'll see here in the uh, DMX board those values are changing as the uh, effect takes takes effect <laughs> on the uh, on the fixture. So you can change tabs in the effect generator to edit color, uh, edit gobos. Here we've got a few, and then there's also an X Y controller for doing more movement stuff. So now I can save this effect using the, that cog button on the top left here. And now when we head over to the uh, show editor tab, and uh, where we can use our effect sequence that we've generated. So we will create a new show. and then add a new line um, here and then we'll open up the object library and here's our effect that we've just created and when we double click that that'll bring up a list of the cue points now click play and you'll see they start to cycle through um, all of these click points with this one second interval that we've that we've created cue points sorry um you can see them going through here as through the effect now clicking the up at the top right there will bring up the uh, properties for the light sequence and here we can change the name of the sequence yeah. And there are also options such as uh, setting the effect to loop continuously. You can also choose to have all the channels return to their start position at the end of the effect. For example, this is very useful if you are triggering, say, a smoke machine. After the smoke machine is on for five seconds and the sequence ends, then the channels would all return to the start position ready to be triggered again. However, if you have a moving head fixture, it might be best to turn this option off which would mean that the light stayed in the final position of the sequence rather than panning back to the start point again. Then we also have some um, space to put in any commands that we might have set up in the macros. Um, so you could have commands here to start or stop the light sequence by using text in the text editor. Cool. And here we can see in the library when we open that up, here is our newly named effect that we've used. We can also um, here it is. And clicking this button here will allow us to create new things, new show, new light sequence or audio object. So then we make a new light sequence and bring up this uh, cue point editor again. And we'll add in some more cue points with the plus button. Like so. And then we can uh, head back to the mixer. Here. Now if we select one of these cue points, um, then 
when we move a fader, you'll see that the DMX value is now displayed in red. This means that it is being programmed to respond to the Q step of an effect. When we click the second one, you'll see that those faders went back to zero. And we'll make some more, you can just program some more faders with these cue points, and you can see them all change as we click. So we can also make changes in fixture control mode, like there, so we can do some movement controls or any kind of color presets, things like that. And then when we go back to the mixer panel, you see those are in red as well, showing that they have been programmed to a cue point. And mastering the program of these cue points is very important to learning Luma DMX, and you get some really great um, results from that. So keep on practicing.